This is the Commission Church Online. Welcome to our podcast. We want to be a church who brings heaven on earth through the word of God and the love of Christ. I pray this week's message blesses you. I want to continue our mini-series that we're doing. We're doing a three-part series uh, on the topic, uh, Audacious Prayers, Audacious Prayers. Uh, And I kind of introduced this topic last Sunday to us uh, of uh, the prayers that we pray in our lives that are pretty audacious and pretty bold, um, that if we pray, and if I told you there are certain prayers that we pray that God is guaranteed to hear, these are the prayers. And last week, we kind of talked about the first prayer, and that was, Lord, uh, search me. And the word search has its root in the word dig and how important it was to ask God to search our hearts and search our lives. And I told you, if we are to pray that prayer as a part of our everyday Christian lives, I guarantee you it's a prayer that God will listen to and he will heed and he will respond to. Today, what I want to teach about is the second prayer. And the second prayer is this prayer, lead me. So look at someone sitting next to you and say, lead me. Man, we have decisions to make every day. It's a part of adulting. It's a part of growing up. It's a part of being an adult. We have decisions galore that we make, right? What do we wear in the morning to work or to school? Uh, that's, that's on everybody's mind. Some of y'all start planning the day before, start putting outfits together. Some of y'all just roll out of bed, just pick out any crumbled thing that you have lying around, put it on and, and leave, right? But some of us plan it out, right? Some, of, uh, some people want to know what their day is going to be like. You, you want to know what you're going to cook. Uh, one of the biggest struggles that we have in homes, and uh, you probably had this conversation yesterday, uh, sitting in a car or sitting inside your house, and you looked at your spouse and said, uh, what do you want to eat, babe? And uh, you say, anything. And, and you go, but, but what do you want to eat? Uh, I'm good with anything. Uh, what do you want to eat? Uh, I'm good with anything, too. Uh, you want pizza? Nope, not pizza. <laughs> you know, have anybody been there before? You know, it's usually the wife that says, uh, I'm good with anything. And you say, you want pizza? No, not pizza. <laughs> But, but uh, decisions, decisions are hard. What to watch on TV? Who knew that was gonna be hard, right? Netflix has thousands of shows and you still scroll through it and then you finally land on The Office, right? Like Jerry, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Decisions like, should I brush my teeth? No, I'm just kidding, that's, do it, please. And if you're Mike Tyson, the biggest decision that you have to make is, uh, should I get another tattoo on my face? You know, like decisions galore. Colossians chapter 3, Paul has a beautiful answer to this in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15. When he says this, he says, let the peace of Jesus Christ rule in your hearts. Let the peace of Jesus Christ rule in your hearts. Father, would you speak to us through this word? I pray that this word will come in power and in might. Transform our minds, transform our thinking, touch our hearts, change us from the inside out. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said, amen. This verse is very landmark in that uh, the word rule that Paul uses in this passage is this athletic term uh, that, that means to arbitrate or to umpire, to arbitrate or to umpire. Uh, a majority of us, if not all, have probably played some sport in your life. And if you've played some kind of competitive sports, be it recreational or, uh, you know, pro level, if there's anybody here, I'd like to, I like your autograph. But uh, you've probably encountered a game where you've had an umpire that's been uh, a mediator or a, a person that makes sure that everybody follows the rules of the game. Uh, and, and this word, Christ rule in your hearts is that athletic term that speaks about this umpire that actually comes and tells you between right or wrong. You know, when considering an important decision, the Bible is very clear in telling us, let the peace of God make that call. Like, are you feeling peace about every decision that you make in your life? We live in a time, in, a Christian, in, in the Christian circles, we live in times where people look at you and say, man, it doesn't matter, small decisions or big decisions. It doesn't matter. Just, just you know, go with your gut. Go with what you feel inside of you. You don't need to pray about everything. You don't need to ask God for wisdom. You don't need to seek the face of the Lord. You don't need to go into the Bible and see what the Bible has to say about the, st- the things that you're going through. Those are things that are not important. I, I'm sorry, but that's hard for me to digest. For me, I strongly believe that in every single decision in your life, I feel in my heart that Jesus is very interested. 
I feel that Christ is very interested in every part of your everyday life. When considering an important decision, what Paul is trying to tell us is, are you allowing the peace of God to rule, to arbitrate, to be the umpire inside your lives? When you don't know what to do, when you have to make a a decision that is going to change the course of your family, your, your destiny, are you allowing the Holy Spirit to speak life over you? Is the Holy Spirit have a place and a voice in your heart to arbitrate that decision? to umpire that decision and say no or to say yes or do you just go with your gut? Paul is kind of opening our minds to this idea of allowing God to be an everyday part of your life. I want to leave a few points with you. Point number one is this, write it down. Acknowledge God's leadership, all right? In asking God to lead you, when we ask God to be an arbitrator of our thoughts and our minds and the decisions that we make, it's important for us to understand that we have to acknowledge His leadership or His lordship. In Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. The Bible says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your path. Or in other words, He will direct your path. It's a very common passage of Scripture that we know, and, and it's a powerful passage of Scripture. He's basically saying the Bible is, is, is encouraging us And Solomon in all his wisdom is encouraging us and he's saying, man, live your life with the knowledge that God is in everything that you do. Consider God in everything that you do, in every decision that you make. God is deeply invested. You want to agree with it or not or you want to, you understand it or not. I want to declare over your lives today that that, that God is very deeply invested in every piece and part of your life. He wants a part in your relationships. He wants a part in your friendships. He wants a part in your your career choices and the decisions that you make. He wants a very active part in the decisions that you make about school and and marriage and the future. The spouse that you're going to end up with. The the, the person that you're dating. He wants a a, a role in that. He wants a say in that. Why? Because this verse tells me, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lead, lean on your own understanding. Here's the thing, right? To trust somebody, you got to know somebody. You can't just trust anybody. Are you, am, I, am I talking to somebody? If you take my daughter and if you put my, my five-year-old, if you take her and put her on a table and ask her to jump, she probably won't because she doesn't know who you are. But if I take her and put her on that table and say, hey, Michaela, jump, she's, I guarantee you she's going to jump. My two-year-old is the same. She'd probably freak out if one of y'all held her and put her on a high plot because she's like, I don't know who you are. I don't know if you're going to hold me if I fall down. But my two daughters know that their dad has got their back. No matter what happens, if I ask them to jump, they will jump willingly into my arms because I haven't dropped them as yet. There are other people that have, that have dropped them, but uh, <laughs> not, not mentioning any names. But... <laughs> Everyone's looking around as to in what direction I looked. (laughs) But some of us struggle with that. Some of us struggle to, to trust God. And the reason we struggle to trust God is because we don't know Him in an intimate way. Today I'm encouraging some of us that our relationship with God needs to go from a know off God to a know God status. Some of us are so content with knowing off God and details of about God. And, and if I do a Bible quiz, and we've been doing Bible quizzes on Instagram, shout out to our social media team. They've been doing great this week, right? And you've probably been interacting, and I've been seeing some of your answers. Outrageous. Uh, just, just. No, but, 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 you know, it's easy to know stuff about God and still know stuff about the Bible. But it's so important to know this God that we profess about, that we believe it. See, the problem is a lot of us can't trust this God because we don't have this personal relationship of knowing this God, right? It's so important to, 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 to kind of move in that, in that relationship that we have with God. You can't trust somebody that you don't know him and you can't be led by somebody that you don't know and you can't trust. It works hand in hand. A lot of us struggle with that. It's important to acknowledge him in all your ways, How do you trust God? How do you know Him? Let's start with this. Let's start with acknowledging God or having a God conscience. 
Somebody say God conscience. What does that mean, pastor? It means that in everything we do day after day in your daily activities and the decisions that we make, am I being conscious that I have a God that is watching over me? Do I have a God that always is looking over me? And do, do I know that God is always interested in every single detail of my life? The first thing that we want to do is to reckon with a part of our human nature with, which drives us to resist the leadership of God. You know, this manifests itself in our relationship with people, let alone with God. If we look into our lives, if we look into the way we, we, we deal with other people around us, a classic example from the Bible would be Moses. Moses acknowledged this every step of his way and his relationship with God. The Bible talks about this in Exodus chapter number 33 and verse number one. The Bible says this, the Lord said to Moses, depart, go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought up out of the land of Egypt to the land of which I swore to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob saying to your offspring, I will give it. Verse 2, I will send an angel before you and I will drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Verse 3, go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go up among you lest I consume you on the way for you are a stiff-necked people. Yikes. You know, God is about to give them this land of Canaan, this land that God has been promising his people. He's been telling them for ages and years and years that, hey, guys, we have this, I, I have this land that, that I want to take you through. You've been a wandering people, but because you are my people, I want to take you to this land. And, and it's going to be a journey. It's going to be years and years and years and decades of a journey for them to get into this promised land, years of slavery, years of, and, and they're going through years of restoration. He says, man, I will take care of all the people that, that, that want to do harm to you, all the ites that I just mentioned, all those termites, I'll take care of them, is what God says. You just have to trust me. It's not your battle to fight. He says, give it to my hands. He says, man, I will drive them out for you. I will do that. Why? Because, because when, 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 when he looks at Moses and says, he says, depart, go from here. You and the people who are, who, whom you have brought out from the land of Egypt to the land which I swore to, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, I will be with you. In Psalm chapter 5 and verse 8, the Bible talks about this and he says, Lord, lead me. David is saying, Lord, lead me, O God, in your righteousness. Because of my enemies, make your way straight before me. In all the things that come, come against us in our lives, guys, I don't know if I was to ask you, what are the daily issues that you face in your life? What are the Hittites? What are the Jebusites? What are all these people that come up against you? What, are the, what is the forms of oppression that come up against you? You can name them one by one. It could be in school. It could be at work. It could be in your relationships. It could be in your marriage. There are so many obstacles that come your way. But God's promise is this. He says, man, because of your, I will make your way straight no matter what you're going through. And in Exodus chapter 33 and verse 13, he continues this and he says, now therefore I have found favor in your sight. Please show me now your ways that I may know you in order to find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And he said to him, if your presence will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. You know what Moses is committed to? Moses is basically saying, man, he, Moses wants to be 100% sure that even, uh, even after God tells him, Moses, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to go with you. I'm going to travel with you. I will not leave your side. Moses wants to just reaffirm and reconfirm. And he's saying, Lord, if you don't go with me, I don't want to go. And even though you know, even though you know that God's not going to leave your side, even though you know that God's not going to abandon you, how many Christians can pray that prayer and say, God, today is a new day. It's a fresh day. Today is going to come. New obstacles are going to come my way. It's going to be new Jebusites. It's going to be new parasites. It doesn't matter. We are going to ask God to lead us in every way possible. How are you asking God? Are you submitting to the Lordship of God and saying, God, I want you to be interested in every part of my life? Big or small, everyday decisions. Are you asking God, God, can you give me wisdom in this? Can you lead me? Can you show me what to do? It's so important. Lead me, Lord. This is one prayer. If you pray, like I said, I guarantee you, God will hear your prayer, church. Point number two. How do you ask God to lead you? When you have the willingness to go where he takes you. Not just submitting to his leadership, 
of his lordship. But the second thing is this, you have to have a willingness to go and travel where he wants to take you, not where you want to go. Because a lot of us have prayers, Lord, Lord, do what you want to do in my life. And you have as a, your, your own advice that you want to give God. God, but here's my plan. Here's my agenda. Here's my five-year plan. Here's my two-year plan. Here's, here's who I want to marry. Here's who I want to end up with. Here's, Lord, here's the person that, you know, you, you have in store for me, God. And I, this is, we, we have all these plans conjured up. But it doesn't begin with God, right? Isaiah chapter number 55 and verse 9, the Bible says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. It's amazing. Are you admitting to God that, Lord, my ways, God, my ways are not even anywhere close to your ways. God is looking at you and me and saying, just like the high, the heavens are as high as it is, my plans for you are higher. No matter how much you're planning and no matter how much they may seem good and beautiful and pretty, I want to assure you, God's ways, God's plans in your life are far superior. They're far bigger. Are you willing to submit yourself to God? When you say, God, lead me, are you coming with preconceived ideas and notions and, and plans and saying, God, this, this is what I want you to bless? Or are you saying, God, wh what would you like me to do? That's important, church. Exodus chapter 13 and verse 17, the Bible says this, when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. Now, I want you to catch on to this. When God, when Pharaoh let the people go, all right, deliverance, breakthrough. Now, I want you to catch on to this. Sometimes when we pray and when we ask God for blessings, you see doors open in front of you. But those are not the doors that you expect to open sometimes. Am I talking to somebody? So, so listen to this. When Pharaoh let the people go, door open, God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines. So they had this idea. This is the best way to go. They mapped it out on Apple Maps. They mapped it out on Google and ways. And they're like, you know what? The popo is right there. We don't go that way. We go this way. This tolls on this way. Let's just go this way. All right. They've planned this out. They've conjured this whole thing up in their minds. But God did not lead them by the way of the Philistines. Although that was near. Hey, this is my plan because this is the, what I think is best for me. How many of y'all do that in your lives? I want this because for my family, because this is what's best for us. I want this for my children because I know this is best. But how many of you began with God saying, God, what do you think is best for us? What do you think is best for my future? He said, God did not lead them, although it was near. For God said, lest the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. God was like, man, you're going to see stuff that's going to scare you. You're going to see stuff that's going to, you know, that, that's going to, you're going to shake in your boots and you're going to, you know, have, have all kinds of thoughts and you're going to curse, curse God and die. You're going to say, I'm going to go back to my old ways and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to redirect you. I'm going to reroute you. Doesn't the GPS do that sometimes? It redirects us because it knows that there's traffic ahead. It knows there's an accident ahead. And it looks at you and says, redirecting. Why? It's going to take me five minutes longer. Override ignore, and you keep going where you want to go, and then, and then guess what happens? You're in traffic. You're like, ah, why didn't I listen to the GPS? So many of us do that. Sometimes God will not lead you in the most obvious path. I want you to hear me out, church. The most convenient way is not always the right way. The most easiest way and the shortcuts are not what God has ordained in your life. They might look God approved. They might look God ordained. You look at it and you're like, this is all God. Hashtag God things, guys. Come on. It could not have, could not have come. And God's like, come on, y'all. It doesn't happen that way. So the prayer has to be Psalm 27, 11. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. You and I got to understand, we face a life that we're always going to have bumps in the way. We're going to have roadblocks. We're going to have issues that pop up. And, and what are we going to do? Are we going to ask God to level those, those, those playing fields out? What are, how are we going to deal with those bumpy paths? You know, I thank God for protecting me from what I thought I wanted and blessing me with what I didn't know I needed. Because many times God's like, this is what you need. And I'm like, override, this is what I want, God. But that's not good for you, Ashish. But God, this is what I've been fasting for and praying for, God. And God's like, no, but you didn't ask for wisdom. You were just praying for it without saying, God, is this your will? 
But sometimes we got to just submit to the will of God and say, before you even pray, say, God, you know what? I'm just, I'm here with an open mind. I'm like, Lord, I know I'm confused, but I want you to do what is best for me in my life. I'm not going to come. Yeah, this, this is my desire. This is my wish, but I'm not going to allow my selfish desires to take over the will of God in my life. This is so important. In Exodus chapter number 13 and verse number 18, the Bible says this, but God led the people around by the way of the wilderness towards the Red Sea. And the people of Israel went up out of the land of Egypt equipped for battle. It's amazing. Sometimes even though that that path doesn't seem straight, what you see as straight is not straight to God. But when you look at God and say, God, straighten my path, it might look crooked, but it's straight according to God. Am I talking to somebody? In your, in, your, in your human understanding, you're like, God, but it's going to this way and that way and this and road bumps and pause and stop and yield. And God, I'm going to allow somebody else to get ahead of me. I'm going to allow somebody else to graduate before me. God, but my friend's going to get married before me, God. But hey, trust me, you don't want that as yet. Come on, somebody. That, that's, that's not the person. It might look good, but they're beautiful, God. It doesn't matter. I've created so many more beautiful things. Come on, somebody. Like, like some of us, need to be submitted to the will of God and saying, God, what do you want out of my life? Not me, not my desires. So some of us need to start thanking God for closing some doors that we thought we needed. We thought that we could live without. But two years down the line, you're going to look back and say, God, thank you for those closed doors because you opened my eyes to what I should have embraced in the first place, what I should have asked for in the first place. And the Bible says this, but God led people around by the way of the wilderness towards the Red Sea and the people of Israel went up out of the land of Egypt equipped for battle. Remember this, even though you go in a way that you don't seem, that is the straight path, remember he's always equipping you for that battle in that route. He gives you the tools necessary. When you ask him for wisdom, the moment you go on your knees and say, God, lead me, he doesn't send you without equipping you. God looked at Moses and said, Moses, you don't want to go without me? You don't have to, buddy. You might have a a stammer on your lip, but it doesn't mean a thing. When I am with you and when you have asked me to lead you and guide you and be with you, I will not abandon you. I will always be by your side. I will hold on to you. I will guide you and I will lead you. You may be equipped and prepared, but you still need him to lead you. No matter how prepared you are, the trip might be longer because God is leading you from this aerial view. God's not looking at your view. Like God God has this aerial view in mind. Haven't you been in those fancy cars where you're like reversing and the camera like pops up from like over the earth and tells you like where you're going? And I'm like, what kind of voodoo is this? You know, It's, it's like that. I was watching Lion King the other day. You know, Simba, yeah, I do watch Lion King from time to time. Don't judge. I was watching it with the kids, okay, and Simba and Nala, they... (laughs) Simba and Nala want to go to this elephant graveyard that they've been looking so, you know, earnestly towards, and they're like, man, we can't go to wait, go go to play. Let's sneak out. Guess who finds out about it? right? Uh, Zazu finds out about it and he's like, he's like the third wheel. How many of y'all have been a third wheel before? Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> a lot of poking and probing going on over here. Zazu's his third wheel and he's like, nah, I know what you guys have got planned. Not happening today. So everywhere Zazu go, uh, everywhere Nala and, and Zimba, uh, Simba go, there, he's there. He's always that person. Today's report, sir. Right? He's always the one day, the daily report, sir. Today's report, sir. The daily report. He, he's, he's always that one that sends the report back. The snitch of sorts, right? But, but you, you see him all the time. He has his aerial view. All he's doing is he's flying over and he's making sure that he has eyes on them the whole time. And what he does is he's warning them about what they don't see in front of them. What they see is a joyride. What they see is fun. What they see is all fun and games. But there's another person that's above them, that's flying, that that, that they don't even recognize that they need, who's there to say, hey, slow down now. Slow down now. It's not all fun and games here. You know, sometimes God is leading us from this area of view and he sees the big picture when you only see what's in front of you. And, And God's like, man, I see everything. 
In Psalm 61 and verse 2, the Bible says, From the end of the earth, I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. This is one of my favorite passages in all of Scripture. You know why? Because it says, lead me to a rock that is higher. When, when we are overwhelmed, man, ask God to lead you to a rock that is higher than where you are in your life, life situation. If you're, being, if, if, if you're being led by anybody, man, make sure that they're leading you in, into a place that is higher where, than, than where you are right now in your life. Never be led by somebody who would drag you down. Never be led by somebody who demotivates you. Never be led by somebody that puts you down constantly. Never be around people that, haven't you had those people that, that, that you go around and man, they, they make you feel like a million bucks. There are other people, you see them from far off and you're like, I got to run the opposite direction. Ain't nobody got time for this, this negativity. How many of y'all are those people? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But he's saying, Lord, lead me to a rock that is higher than I. Because sometimes we need that. When we're on, on, on the same eye level and we're like, God, this is all I'm seeing. you got to look at God and say, God, I just need you to do you things, God. Would you take me to a higher place? Because God will lead you to places that you would never choose sometimes. When you pray that prayer, God will lead you to places that you cannot control sometimes. God will lead you to circumstances that you don't understand sometimes. God will lead you to situations that compel you to trust him sometimes. But remember, when you trust in God and say, God, lead me, remember that he's going to take you to places that you least expect to be in. And sometimes it's closer to him. The third point I want to leave you is this. When you ask God to lead you, you're submitting to his plans and his timelines. His plans and his timelines. In Psalm 25, verse 5, the Bible says this, Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. You remember the people of Israel that I was talking about earlier? That straight path that would have taken them, you know, a few days, right? A few days, tops a week, two weeks, three, maybe even four. That, that, that's all it should have taken them. Right? The Bible tells us that that trip that was supposed to be for a few days took them 40 years. Like imagine that. A detour of 40 years. Some of y'all are wondering, God, why is it taking five years? Why is it taking two years, God? Sometimes God is taking you in the straight path and you have no idea that he's doing that. It's taking longer than you expected it to take. If he planned a 40-year trip, be assured that he will provide for you all the way round. You know, 40 years, he fed them. 40 years, he clothed them. 40 years, he made sure that every dead body was buried. He made sure that not one person, do you know, in the 40 years, they did not get attacked once because they were in the perfect will of God. You could be in a desert experience, but remember that he will not take you through that unless he sees that you are ready for it and unless he knows that he is able to provide for you and lead you through it. Yeah. Ask him to lead you today, church. Ask him to lead you. He provided for them. David has this great desire to be led by God. Being a shepherd he's himself, he understands the, the power of leadership. Any leaders over here? I want to encourage you. The secret to being a great leader is your ability to be led by God. Men, I need to talk to some men in this place. Men, it is important that if you want your wives to submit to you, yeah, it's biblical, pastor. It's biblical that they need to submit to us. If you want them to submit to you, remember that no woman wants to be in submission to a man who isn't in submission to God. I didn't hear any men say amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> it's important, guys. How? Let your prayer reflect that. Let the time that you spend in the presence of God reflect that. Not your domineering character of, of you know, that, that you display through your voice or through your actions or your leadership abilities. No, no, no. That's not what I'm talking about. You're standing in God. Lead the woman that God has placed in your life. It could be your daughters. It could be your sons. It doesn't matter. The people over you, lead them. 
like Christ would lead. Are you willing to wait on the Lord? That, that verse is basically saying this, Lord, I will wait for you. Lead me in your truth and teach me for you are the God of my salvation. For you, I will wait all the day long. Come on, somebody, this is important. Are you willing to wait on the Lord so he can lead you to salvation? Salvation means to save me. Lord, I will wait on you so that you can save me. Out of Waiting all day long is what he's saying. Can I remind somebody this? One day you will wake up and you will be so glad that you didn't just settle for anything. I love people that wait and that trust in God while they wait because one day you will look back and you will say, Lord, I thank you, Lord. I thank you because you gave me that ability because, because I chose to wait for God's plan, not my plan. Trust God even when his answer is wait. Trust God even when you think that there's no way out of what you're going through in your life. Do you know that some of the most beautiful days of your life haven't happened as yet? I want to remind some of y'all, you probably thought the birth of your first child, man, that was the most beautiful thing. Oh, getting married to that beautiful woman was the most amazing day of your life. The day you got baptized, yes, that, that, that is the most beautiful day. The, the day you came to know Christ, that was the beautiful day. But because you, know, because you experienced that most beautiful day where you experience Christ and know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, remember that that God that leads you is going to take you into bigger, higher places of blessing and some of the most beautiful days is ahead of you. And I want you to write this down. God is never late. He's always on his time. Come on, somebody. I said, God is never late. He may seem late according to your watch and according to your calendar and according to your clock and according to, 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 to all the plans that you have, but he's always on his time. And you know what Ecclesiastes 3 says? He says, God makes all things beautiful in his time. The Bible doesn't say he makes all things possible. Possible would be it will come to pass. Beautiful means not only would it come to pass, when it comes to pass, it will be the very best. That's what beautiful means. Point number four, and I'm going to close with this. Asking God to lead you means accepting his protection. Accepting his protection. Exodus 13 and verse 21, continuing in the prayer of, continuing in the prayer of, um, of Moses, he says, and the Lord, uh, the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way and by night in the pillar of fire to give them light that they might travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from the people. It's powerful, church. You know, uh, the shepherd always leads from the front. That's what a shepherd does. My dad told me a story of once when he went to uh, Israel. Uh, my parents went to Israel once and they did this trip around Israel. And he was telling me the story of how, um, of how he, uh, he encountered this uh, group of, uh, of tourists that they went along with on the same bus and they were taken from, from spot to spot. And, and as they were on their travels, uh, there was the, the tour guide stopped them at one point in time as they as they were traveling through the city or, or through the through the villages. He stopped them because he saw this huge herd of sheep coming with a shepherd, and he said, "Hey, I want to show you exactly what these shepherds look like when they lead their sheep." And uh, and and they they looked at this this huge herd and they and he would teach them about uh, Psalm 23 and how a shepherd leads and and how a shepherd always leads from the front because a sheep that knows its shepherd always leads the sheep from the front and everyone was amazed and everybody was like wow that's pretty cool and every time the shepherd would take a step the sheep would follow every time the shepherd stopped the sheep would stop it was beautiful they learned their lesson, they went their way. In another hour's time, they encountered this other herd of sheep. It wasn't that big, but it was a smaller herd of sheep. But as they saw this, this herd of sheep walking, they saw the, the person that was leading the sheep had a huge stick in his hand. He was leading them from, the, from, from behind. He was at the back. And everybody was like, hey, look at that. This is this, this guy that, that's leading the sheep, but he's leading from behind. I thought you said that the shepherd always leads from the front. So this man was confused. The guide was confused himself. They made, they made the, guys, the, the, the bus stop and he got down, had a small chat with the guy who was leading the sheep from behind. He comes back, hops on, on, the, on, the, 
on the bus and he looks at the people and says, guys, here's the thing. I'm sorry. I know that many of you thought he was a shepherd, but this guy wasn't a shepherd. He actually bought the sheep from the shepherd and he was about to go and he's about to butcher these sheep. Am I talking to somebody? He, this is going to be dinner. He's trying, he was trying to lead them from the front, but they wouldn't follow because he wasn't their shepherd. The only way that they would go with him was if he would lead them from the back because at this point, they're not, they're not following out of trust. They're following out of fear. And I was like, whoo, mind blown. This is amazing. My God is not a God that leads you out of fear. My God is not a God that drives you in fear. My God looks at you and says, you are my sheep. He says, I am your shepherd. And when I lead you, I lead you into paths of righteousness. I lead you into brooks of water. I lead you into green pastures. I lead you and I provide for you. That's the God that we serve. Are we accepting the, profession, the, the protection of God? Here's how God led them in every way. He leads them in the night and he leads them in the day. He leads them when they're awake and when they're sleeping, in the conscious and the unconscious, when they, when they acknowledge, when they can't acknowledge. God was fighting their battle. That's what God's protection means, that even when you don't know, God is fighting battles for you that you know nothing about. That's what God's protection is all about. During the day was a pillar of cloud. He went ahead of them and when everything was clear, broad daylight, you've heard of the term, daylight robbery, right? The enemy comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But God, he, he, he sent his son to give us life and life in eternal. When, when everything is in broad daylight, he still, it still gives you protection. Even when you don't know where to go, even when you don't have direction, you don't know what to do with your life. You don't know what your future holds for you. You don't know who to marry. You don't know what decision that you need to make for your family. He says, man, you know what? I Just submit your will to me. Ask me for leading. And even when things seem clear, I will still be your guide. Sometimes we have choices in front of us and we're like, Lord, I know that this is the obvious choice to make, but I think I'm going to go with this because I'm going to, even though it seems the most obvious choice to make, why don't you spend a day asking God, God, I want to spend some time praying about this decision that I'm making. This is a job opportunity that's before me. God, I'm going to take a few days to pray about this, not weigh the, weigh the pro and the cons, all that's important, but ask God for wisdom before you make those decisions. Some of you are like, oh brother, every decision that we make, some of y'all are in profession. Some of y'all are doctors. I know some of y'all are doctors here. Some of y'all are nurses. Some of y'all, you know, have, have different other, uh, you know, professions that you do. Some of y'all are accountants. Y'all crunch numbers. You know, when you do, uh, when you add one plus two, not that I'm saying that that's what you do. I'm pretty sure that you do much more difficult numbers but, than that. But um, when you crunch numbers, you're not like, God, I'm about to crunch these numbers. Would you be with me? It just comes naturally. Doctors or nurses, when you're about to administer that shot, you don't say, Lord, be with me right now, Lord. I just need this protection and covering. Maybe when you first started, but you don't do that every single day. You're going to spook your patients out, you know? <laughs> your patients going to be like, do you know what you're doing, you know? Sometimes it's, it's not needed to ask God, right? But no. But in some way or the other, are you asking God, before you go to work every single day, are you saying, God, would you lead me today? Would you be with these hands today? God, would you lead my thoughts today? Would you lead me as I go and take this test? Would you lead me? We know we all pray before the test. That's one place we always ask God to lead us. I'm not even doubting that at all. That was one day that I always prayed. I didn't study. I just said, Lord, lead me. No, but here's the thing. You have to ask God to lead you in everything. I'm challenging you today. It could be small, it could be big. It doesn't matter, Kevin. When you come to the Lord and say, God, you know what? I just want to surrender every thought, every action, every single thing that I want to do, God. Would you take complete control? And Lord, I want to know what you think before I even do that. There's power in that, y'all. Or like a pillar in the night. Lead, ask him to lead you when things are not clear. It's important to discern the decisions that you have to make in your life. Are you able to ask God for clear-cut answers to all the things that you are seeking answer for? You know, it's in darkness that we stumble because there's no clarity. So many of us are trying to make decisions in the dark, in the darkness. And God's like, man, would you seek my face when you can't find your way? I mean, think about it at night when you're trying to go use a restroom in the middle of three o'clock in the morning. Lights are off. You don't want to switch on the light, wake everybody up. What do you do, Jeff? You're like trying to find your way around, right? But, but you get used to your house after some time that you really know where everything is. 
So you're like trying to dodge the, the edge of the bed. You still go and bump your knee against the bed and you're like, ah! But it's amazing what light can, light, light always sheds light. It, 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 there's, there's darkness is, you know, it, it, it dissipates, right? When the light comes on, that's what light does. No matter how much we try to decipher, no matter how much we try to make our way around, no matter how much we try to figure things out, it's so important to ask God, God, would you be my light? Because sometimes I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I don't know what decision to make. It seems pretty dark around me. And those are the moments that God comes through for you and says, I will be your shining light. In Psalms 119, worship team, can you get ready? Psalms 119, verse 105. The Bible says this, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When you ask God to lead you, you're like, God, I can't, I can't, I can't hear you, God. I can't, I, I don't know what you want me to do. Open the word, start reading the word. So many answers in here that God might lead you to and say, open, some, some of us, I don't know when the last time is that we ask God to lead us through the word of God. So important in John chapter eight and verse 12, the Bible says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. It's so important to ask God to lead you, church. Are you asking God to lead your every step? Would you stand up to your feet with me this, this morning as we close out? We're gonna spend some time in prayer and I'm gonna ask the worship team to just spend some time in worship as well. And like we do every Sunday, we're gonna have some time for prayer. Our prayer partners are gonna be available here to pray. We're praying for so many people today. We're praying for Lisa and her sister. We're praying for the Navas. They just moved into their new home. But with that joy and celebration came a lot of, lot of things that they're praying for as well. Richard's dad was admitted in the hospital. We're praying for him. Lisa lost her aunt. We're praying for her. There's so many things that family is going through this weekend. Let's cover them in prayers. So many people that couldn't make it today because they're probably sick in their bodies, but we're, we're praying for every single person. If there's somebody here that needs prayers, you just need somebody to cover you. You need somebody to just be around you and say, hey, we'll pray with you, it doesn't matter. It's not something that you're probably used to, but part of submitting yourself to God is looking at God and saying, God, you know what? I don't have it together. I need a community of people that can pray for me. What we also have is we have communion at the back. If there's anybody that wants to participate in communion and you, you know, didn't get a chance to uh, be here for corporate communion. We do communion here as a church once a month, but we also have communion at the back for those who didn't get a chance to be a part of that. You might have been working or you just want to take communion every Sunday. It doesn't matter if that's you and you want to just participate. Um, Jeff's at the back and he'll probably lead you in communion today. And uh, as, as he leads you, um, Let's just ask God for wisdom. Let's ask God for strength today. Let's ask God to guide us and lead us, guide our every path, guide our every step. I wanna encourage you with these things. How should we submit to God's leadership and leading every day? by studying the word. Every single day, you can be led by God when you're led by the word of God. Open your word sometimes, please. I'm encouraging some of us today, open this powerful tool. Make sure you study a devotional. How can I be led by God? Because our primary resource when seeking direction from God, His will, it's revealed in this word. Ask God, God, what does your word tell me about it? Sometimes God leads through people. Proverbs 19, 20 says that. It says, listen to counsel and accept discipline from the wise. Sometimes talking with your pastors, talking with somebody that you can trust, that can pray over you, that can lead you. Sometimes God leads us through his wisdom. Ask God for wisdom. That's what Solomon did. He said, Lord, give me wisdom. I don't need money. I don't need fame. Give me wisdom. Seek ye first the, the wisdom. Uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added. There's this connotation of wisdom associated with that term. Can you ask God for wisdom today? God leads you to the witness of the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and lead you.
every step of your way. As we submit, as we pray today, can we just give our everything to the Lord as we submit our will to him, as we ask God to lead him? I want to guarantee you, when you can pray this prayer, God, lead me every day of your life. I want to guarantee you, God will answer your prayer. He will lead you. He will be your leader. He will be your leader. He will guide you. He will be that shepherd. That leadership is not a leadership of fear. It is a leadership of trust and faith. And there's somebody here that does not have a personal relationship with Jesus because you can't trust somebody. You can't be led by somebody that you don't trust. You can't trust somebody that you don't know. And some of us need to move from surface level, know off to know God. There's somebody here today, we want to pray for you as well. We want to help you in your walk with Christ and saying, hey, we want to help you know this Jesus, know this Christ. And if that's you, we want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. Thank you for listening. We love bringing you the word on so many different platforms. We are so thankful for what God is doing in and through us. We'd love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out. And don't forget to share this message if it has blessed you.